I'm waiting for another day for the uh, fillets to uh, cure before we put in the uh, and sand, do a final sanding before I put on the glass tape. I'm going. I've taken out my little uh, low angle plane and just just set it out where you're getting enough air here. You know, we take slow and easy and just move it along. I've got the spots here where it's tied down at, so move the string out of the way. Let me retie it in the middle here again. I've already got most of this done coming out of the nose block. And I haven't done any rounding over of the edges. Get it down to where it's 99% you know, flush. If you got some spots in these inner blocks where they're a little low, don't worry about them. Your hands down. The thing you don't want to do is attack the plane and start making scallops along the upper surface. Then that'll show up. And Okay, I'm satisfied with that. I can give you a little bit more. These first, first pads were mainly just taking off the uh, gel magic that gets squeezed out. But it's machinable and planable, so don't worry about ruining your uh, plane iron. Follow this down. lightly spread it along. And that should be enough for now. I have most of the, I should say not most, all the sanding done, uh, machine work and the final touch up and the planing and everything and the final shaping of the breast hooks on the front and the, and the uh, transom corners in the back. Uh, there's a lot of hand sanding. Uh, there's some machine work in here. That you need to go along gingerly, feel with one hand and sand with the other. Uh, be aware that you may be getting ready to poke yourself. Uh, just feel for rough edges and stuff, especially along these other, you know, underside here. The uh, spacers may be uh, uh, thinner. Some of mine were just a hair thinner than the other rails. And, uh, go up and, and sand them down so that when you finish them off you don't have any rough edges that you may you know, uh, later uh, splinter yourself on. So everything is all sanded down, rounded down. I, I still use my hand rasp, that double hand rasp I got from Duckworks, uh, it's, uh, the Chinese version. And it's just basically, just you kind of go along feeling the roundness as you go. You don't want a whole lot of uh, radii uh, on this. Uh, you know, like a quarter inch radius or whatever, because you're just chewing away too much wood, especially in, the, in these thin spots where um, the uh, gaps are. So just put a slight rounding on it so uh, it has, uh, you know, you know it's sanded down and, and, and uh, so there's any rough edges. And it feels, feels rough. I also found that I could take this uh, half piece of plastic tubing and then put the sandpaper inside of it like that and then on camera here and then just hold the edges and then run along like that that works fine for helping you turn you know sand around edge on, on all these other little uh, inside and outside corners and but still it's going to be a lot of handwork going in on the corners 
on these little uh, spacer slot uh, openings. I didn't waste the time uh, like I did last time where I cut out little strips of uh, tape backed sandpaper to round over these uh, square corners on the ends of the spacer blocks. I figured uh, they're fine, you know, I'm not going to worry about them. So basically that's it. So now I'm going to get out the stain and we'll do some staining. i got to make up a little tool. Uh, I don't think my uh, brushes, my foam brushes, I don't have one out uh, right now, will fit down in here. The shaft is going to be too thick. So what I'm going to do is take some cloth and then wrap it around the popsicle stick and then tape it and use that as uh, my little brush to get down in between the gaps to uh, stain inside here. But you have to really be careful that you're not spilling and dripping on the inside. Uh, I may or may not put a, a tape brake on the inside tape and, and power and paper brake on the inside. Uh, we'll see how that goes. So let me go get some staining done and get my gloves on and we'll, uh, I don't know if you want to watch this, I may give a little bit of segment on it, but you know, it's pretty much, you know, if you can paint, you can do this. Yeah, I got a little bit on the, on the nose there already. Keep your stain close by on something so you can't spill it and get, get it in on the end grain here. It's to look pretty cool. And you can see here where the uh, uh, wood filled epoxy, the easy fill that the System 3's easy fill it, uh, filled in nice. I mean, it's going to look uh, really, really good look even better when it's got some coats of varnish on it. And then we'll come along here with our little, um, it's basically a popsicle stick with some uh, cloth rolled over. And when you roll the cloth, roll the bitter, the raw edges inward so that they're completely inside the lump here. And then just tape it to the popsicle stick. And then you can use that to get in and do the spots in between. Remember this isn't furniture. If you got a little spot in the corner you can if you look just right you can see there's no stain in there. Don't worry about it. But if you want to you can. It's your boat your time. almost wish now I would have gotten some uh, more of the uh, Sapelli or Sapel or whatever they call that stuff for these blocks. I mean it really stands out if you can put in a contrasting wood um, on the uh, on these spacer rails. Maybe you have a couple different woods, maybe some uh, holly or you know some light colored wood. And then come on along on the bottom, make sure you get underneath here while you're going along. But you can come up with uh, a couple darks and lights that contrast to the inner and outer rail. Uh, it really looks pretty spectacular. Basically that's it. <laughs> Just painting with a piece of cloth. And this is the sleeve. I'm using a little bit of leftover sleeve from a sweatshirt. I probably have some uh, purple cloth around that goes with the rest of this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue and we'll come back with if something significant comes up. Uh, we get a little bit of transom color here going. Make some of these colors pop out. I still got to put a plate in here to carry the uh, little uh, feet of the uh, screw feet on the uh, motor itself so and I guess I shouldn't get too carried away going the back here because I have to uh, finish it off yet so 
starting to come in pretty, pretty nice. Pretty nice, as Larry uh, David would say, huh? Pretty nice. Oh, well, once you get it done, you uh, want to go along from all directions. Look over the top, under the bottom. See that you don't have any. Uh, I have to bring my flashlight out with me. It's nice to have a flashlight to go underneath on some of these hidden edges to take a look. But it's you can also come along and look for any spots that might be a little light. It could be just the the grain. Yeah, that was a little light. And kind of fill them in and even them out. Sometimes the wood has a little bit of density and changes in the oils and the green patterns and it makes it uh, take on the uh, stain a little differently. So I'm happy with this now so uh, this will cure for like two or three days. I'll go ahead and start doing something else on the inside. Uh, I still haven't figured out what I'm going to do for the inside whether new seat, a low seat, uh, a beam seat, how big the tanks and the ends are going to be, I don't know. I've got another one I think coming up on the next video will be uh, following this one was uh, somebody asked me about a knot, my uh, death grip hitch, whether it could be tied around and make an eye and it can, and so I'll show you how to do that probably coming up on the next one just for a change of pace. So. Uh, this will end uh, the one on doing finishing out uh, the uh, the rails on the hull, and uh, I'm quite satisfied. And you can probably guess by the color of the model here, you know what color the hull's going to be. So, till later.